Now, this is ARC. Uh, ARC specializes in investing in the future. ARC is famously kind of underperformed because they invest in things that are a little too fancy and unlikely to happen. And they think that quantum is too far out for even them. <laughs> Remember, these guys invest in Beyond Meat. <laughs> these guys are the biggest baggies in the world. Come on, guys, you're being mean. This isn't that bad. Look, these guys mean well, and I'm sure they're very smart and good investors and everything. Just the, the simple thing, having spent a lifetime in pharma, is that most of the costs of drug development are the human clinical trials you have to do to prove the drug helps people. Computers cannot help with that. The discovery of the drug part, uh, yeah, I get, let, me, let me try to draw a paint here real quick. All right, so if it costs, let's say it costs $300 million. So this is $300 million to develop a drug. A reasonable guess. These guys use these probability adjusted models. There aren't, aren't any medicines that cost $2.4 billion to make, um, to discover. Now, between lots of different failures, maybe, maybe, I still dispute that number is a little, a little silly, but let's just say, you know, $400 million, okay, to develop a drug. All right. 300. And 50, I'd say 300 to 350 is human clinical trials, not relevant to computing, right? Completely irrelevant. We don't use many computers in, drug, in the drug business. It's just not, you know, that important. All right, so we got 50 to $100 million that it costs to discover a drug, which we'll call, dis you know, we'll call this discovery, and we'll call this clinical, or, you know, that's the sort of human experiments, and these are the non-human experiments is another way to look at it. Okay, well, what does is, what is this boil down to? Well, let's blow this up, okay? Let's blow this up into, what does this cost, okay? Well, it's not always easy to break down, but I've done this many, many times in my career. I'm going to say that 25 million here is toxicology. So this is when we take the animals we force feed them huge amounts of the drug, we kill them, we dissect them, and we see if there are any histopathological changes to the animal. This cannot be replaced by quantum. The FDA wants to see the organs. They want to see that you sacrifice the animals. They want to see that the animals didn't develop vacuoles or other tissue abnormalities that pathologists know. And that's just a job that, you know, hasn't changed in a long time and it's not going to change. So that's the animal toxicology. And again, I'm being probably being a little bit uh, underweighting this. It's probably bigger, but, you know, and this is two, they call it the two species rules. So usually you do rats and dogs, but many companies these days are doing rats, dogs, and primates. Okay. So um, there's a normal battery of like in vitro tests you do, and you kind of need to do this quantum computer or not. So I would say sort of 10 million of the discovery work is going to be sort of just traditional in vitro drug discovery. And that can include like some safety testing, like the chromosomal abnormality, AIMS test, um, things like uh, KCO2, uh, plasma binding, you know, this is all just basic, you know, work that you have to do. And it's going to be, again, you, you know, no matter what your simulation tells you, you want to see it in real life. Okay. So that's kind of the nature of the beast there. A big cost that people don't appreciate here is, is actually manufacturing. I didn't appreciate it until I joined industry. But manufacturing is, is, a, is a pretty big cost here where you are expending a lot of money because when you invent a drug, you also have to make it. And you have to invent a way to make it. And then you have to invent a way to scale up making it. And then you have to invent a way to do QAQC and what's called CGMP, so you do analytic methods. So you have to come up with methods that will... Um, you can say when the drug is made in specification or it's out of spec. Um, 
And all of those have to be filed with FDA. So it's it, depending on how big the drug is, it could be a fairly laborious uh, process. And that's, again, nothing there in quantum. So where, where is quantum helping here? So far, we've skinned this down to this much, right? And do you guys think that I missed something where quantum could be useful? You tell me. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm saving the last piece. Yeah, we haven't included overhead like IP and stuff like that. So here's the part where it could be relevant. And this is discovery, the actual drug discovery. Now, now we have to blow this up a little bit. Okay, so where, where can we use this in discovery? Well, how what do we do when we discover drugs? How does it work? Well, that's a good question. And this is, this is really interesting because this has changed a lot over the years. When we do drug discovery, we end up, really interesting, we end up spending a lot of time on the ideation phase. And what does this mean? So we spend a lot of time on, on companies like mine would do, we call this ideation, but bigger companies might call this basic research. And this can, this can vary quite a bit. Many bigger companies don't even do basic research, which is interesting, which is why I call it ideation. So my version of it is we read the published literature, we talk to the universities, <laughs> and we stay abreast of what they're doing. And this all boils down to really something, I maybe mean, should rephrase it as target ID. Target ID. I think I have a way common home. So ultimately, we have to figure out what target are we trying to um, intervene with in the human body or, el or elsewhere, natural protein on or unnatural. And we need to figure out what is it that we're going to make a drug towards. That is the hardest part of drug discovery. Okay. By far, this is the hardest part. I didn't say it was the most expensive, but it is the hardest part. And quantum cannot help us here. If you told me what the next great target was for cancer, I'm made. I got it made because I can make a small molecule. I can make a large molecule. I can make any sense. I could, there's a hundred ways I could tackle it, but I don't know what protein in the human body, when inhibited, will treat cancer really well or depression or schizophrenia or any other thing. I just don't know because that's the hard part about biology. We don't understand all the biology and genetics. Um, so we got to read, we got to do experiments, we got to look around the world to see who's doing cool experiments. Oh, this guy thinks that depression is, uh, is controlled by this, uh, this crazy protein, uh, uh, NL NLRP3. And this guy thinks that, you know, oncology, uh, the secret is the Wnt protein, WNT or P53 or whatever. And so these guys, yeah, RB, the point is that we're going through the entire expenditure of drug discovery. And we're talking about, we have so far, you know, we've shown that everything in color other than the yellow is 100% nothing to do with quantum. So for, for the three or $400 million it costs to develop a drug, we've excluded, I want to say, 90%, 95% of that cost. <laughs> so you're talking about, and by the way, by time, these, this applies the same way. By time, this is the exact same thing as the cost. So how do we get our target ID? Well, I explained a few ways. We could either do the biology ourselves, which very few people even do anymore. We could read a bunch of literature, fund some universities to do it. And then when we're ready, Okay, this is the part that's relevant. We might want to do a simulation, okay? And in addition to that, we might want to do crystallography. And then we might do something called assay development, where we have to actually make a test or several tests where we see if our molecule in real life is actually uh, inhibiting the drug in question. 
And then we can do something called hit to lead. So crystallography, even with quantum, we ultimately need to take a picture of, of what does this protein look like? And there's only one way to do that, which is to take a picture. And we do that with x-rays. It's called x-ray crystallography. It hasn't changed in 60 years. It's not too expensive. And we just do that. Once we have some protein purified, we're going to do a little bit of assay development. So we actually put the cell-based assay or some other assay. It doesn't have to be cell-based. It can be um, SPR, or it could be FRET, it could be whatever. And that's not going to be related to a computer either. So we are now excluding called this three tenths. So up until here as well, we've excluded this entire thing as non-quantum, not applicable. So what do these simulations actually cost? Let's start the simulation. So if I'm running a simulation using Schrodinger software, and they're publicly traded, SDGR, okay? Well, this is what my friend at Google told me. He said, you understand what the whole revenue of SDGR is? So if we completely replace the drug company's software package, how much is that? SDGR only has 100 million revenue. So the entire business of drug discovery simulation is 100 million. That's the market size. And this works really well. This works fine. You don't need something better because you the places where you optimize are here. You don't optimize in the simulation because ultimately you have to go to real life. And there are problems with the simulation, even with quantum, you will have problems. So theoretically, in the simulation process, you could use quantum, but right now we have a problem factoring numbers. So putting the state of a five-digit number in the quantum computer is difficult today. Putting the state of the entire protein in a quantum computer and ligands that maybe bind that protein, I would say that's 10, 15, 20 years away. And it's not going to be better than the Schrodinger models anyway, because the Schrodinger models are cheap, they run on any hardware, and they're very accurate. Why? Well, when you do Unity, if you ever program in Unity, and you do a, a baseball bat and a, and a baseball in Unity, or I don't know, maybe a, what are we going to do here? What can I draw here? That's pretty simple. Maybe like a little platform here. And you have a ball, you know, one of those blue rubber balls. And you, you, you take the ball and you throw it and you bounce it against here. The Unity system is very good at sort of simulating the physics. And the ball sort of comes to rest here. And it's really accurate because if you, if you throw it again, you do it again, you, it'll bounce slightly differently. And there's some cool examples of this in 3JS and stuff like that. Simulating physics in reality is not that hard. When we simulate it at the atomic level, quite frankly, there are not that many quantum effects that we need to take into account. And almost all of what we're worrying about here is int intermolecular effects, specifically hydrogen bonds. And in fact, some of my favorite medicinal chemists, guys I've worked with in the past, say, I'm not even sure I need the Schrodinger. All this really is is helping me visualize where should I make the hydrogen bonds. But in reality, it's not that useful because I can see where there's, okay, I need to be lipophilic here. I need to be a hydrogen bond donor there. You don't need any of these systems. They're for, they're for convenience. Now, if this model, this system could come up with a perfect drug that's even better than, um, better binder, right, than uh, with Schrodinger or, or doing it by hand, now what? Well, the problem with that is that's not that valuable because now we got to go hit to do hit to lead. 
and lead optimization. Uh, if it was that easy, then the current systems we have would work because we don't know what actually happens in real life. Now, maybe the quantum system will be a, a better approximation, but maybe it won't. And what ends up happening is we actually do take the hits we get from simulation and we start to think about, well, what do we want out of these hits? Because just binding, just binding the, um, the binding pocket isn't enough. We have to ask ourselves, well, what about the PK? What about the drug-drug interactions? As far as we know, this stuff isn't really simulatable yet. What about safety? What about binding other proteins? Solubility. The whole admet, you know, the metabolism. And this is stuff quantum won't help us with. So then we do this in lead optimization where we say, okay, we've got the molecule here, and I'm going to take the molecule and add a methyl group here. Or I'm going to fluorinate this, this uh, hydrogen, replace it with a fluorine. And I'm not sure that's going to help you very much because now we're, we have to simulate many bodies. Simulating it in quantum with, you know, 500 qubits, 1,000 qubits, you know, 10,000 qubits, that could work. But you're never going to be able to simulate the entire human body. Not even quantum fans think that's a good idea. So lead optimization is going to happen outside of the simulation. So the only part of this that's relevant is this tiny little block. All right, this tiny little block here is the only piece of this that's, that's relevant at all. Here it is in green. And that's, again, pulled out from this, this part here. So that green little box is the relevant part of pharmaceuticals to quantum. And that green box today is a $100 million in revenue. And in fact, if you're a decent programmer, it's actually free. You can write your own drug discovery software or use open source drug discovery software. You actually don't even need Schrodinger. Schrodinger would tell you otherwise, but we developed a free to use drug discovery platform and Schrodinger has one or two competitors. So this is it. Maybe 1% of drug discovery relevant. So very, very, very low relevance to drug discovery, but everyone wants to claim it's so important to drug discovery. Probably the best open source one was Scripps, Scripps docking software that Jason and I used to make drug-like. Pull it up for you. There you go, autodoc is the autodoc.scripts.edu. While I was in jail, I emailed with Oleg, who's the creator of uh, autodoc, and I ha had to add him to my um, prison email. We shut down drug like because you know we just couldn't get actually get any commercial traction. Yeah, exactly. Say no, you got it. That's the issue. Is that it's easy to talk about as if wow.